Ladies and gentlemen, you are in for a treat. In my possession is the UFC 199 version of The Count, Michael Bisping. So let's talk about a few key differences here in the perk. So the only difference is his, with his UFC legendary version is that he has marathoner. But in this one, he has fast hands on, which allows him to throw hooks and uppercuts a lot faster. More so the blocking, the accuracy, let's see, head movements and the footwork all gets improved by like maybe a point or two. Uh, to be fair, the differences between the UFC 199 version and the legendary version are relatively the same. Maybe like one point or two point differences, which doesn't really make uh, much. Uh, here, his cardio is at 100, whereas the legendary version has the 99 cardio. You know, I'm saying one point, I guess, makes a difference. But, uh, man, this is the Michael Bisping that fought Luke Rockhold to become the two-time middleweight champion, I believe. The B I, th I believe he beat Anderson Silva the first time, and then Rockhold the second time that they fought. So we're going to get into these matches and just see just how big of a difference these stats make. And also, if you're enjoying the video you made it this far, go ahead and like and subscribe, my boys. Without any further ado, let's get it! Ah, oh, yes, ladies and gentlemen, the Count Michael freaking Bisping, bro. Stepping off of his fight against Luke Rockhold, this man has increased uh, accuracy, pretty good cardio, and a solid boxing setup, bro. They gave this man four or five star boxing combinations, which in a lot of people's eyes doesn't really matter, but boxing combinations is what makes the difference between a Nate Diaz type of striker, where you get off a good one too, and a Ilya Taporia striker, who could just encompass everything and shift mad combos off of the one two. Most people can only do like a one, two, three, four, consisting of a normal jab hook combo, whereas their one, two, three, fours can consist of efficient uppercuts, body hook, and overhand combos that seamlessly flow together, man. Uh, this Michael Bisping is definitely a freaking problem. Going up against Robbie Lawler, who has relatively some of the best lead hook and lead kicks and uh, recovery uh, stats in the game, it's really going to make a point to just see just how much better this Michael Bisping is against Robbie Lawler and against the roster. Uh, I remember going back as far as UFC 197, I believe, is whenever he fought Anderson Silva. Maybe 195, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, that fight was completely a landslide in, in Silva's favor. A lot of people think that this Bisping came from that, and that's not the case. If we got, if we got that Bisping from that Anderson Silva fight, he'd be absolutely trash because that was his worst performance. Even though somehow he got the decision victory, uh, this one by far is just a freaking dog. You got the fast hands perk utilized on top of that four-star boxing combinations, so I can really just pop off, bro. And they increase his head movement, so it's pretty elusive. Really elusive. Ooh, that was a good uppercut. I just wish he got a longer stint in the UFC game. Uh, you know, he fought George St. Pierre. I think that was his last fight, man. I think that was his last fight, if I'm remembering correctly, for the, uh, for the belt. I remember George St. Pierre came in in 2016 and completely mopped the floor with Michael Bisping, but... Uh, reason why GSP didn't keep the belt was solely because he had just fell out of love with the sport and was just trying to make a, you know what I'm saying, a little one-time comeback appearance. But if it wasn't for GSP, uh, you know, Anders, uh, not Anderson Silva, Israel Adesanya would not be champion because he, he really paved the way after GSP uh, vacated that belt uh, off of uh, beating Michael Bisping. But nonetheless, man, this is a solid middleweight character, man. I don't see a lot of people picking him solely because his he's labeled as a kickboxer in this game, but his kickboxing stats are among the worst. He's really a boxer, to be honest with you. His boxing is by far one of the smoothest in the middleweight division. I put him up there with uh, Dreykus Duplessis in terms of the striking and the durability that really go hand in hand with his character, but I do not see a lot of play with him. And I think it's because a lot of people do not know how to actually utilize Michael Bisping. He is a 
short burst type of fighter. You know, he doesn't really throw off crazy combos. It's best to just keep it simple, but keep it close with this Michael Bisping. Because one thing he will do, he will shut their lights out. But you got to be efficient with them. And that takes a lot of practice. Uh, a lot of people in this game just like to throw shots and hope that they connect. With Michael Bisping, you kind of want to telegraph as opposed to just, you know, winging shots off. Even though you could play like that because that is, you know, within his reach of play style because he does have 100 cardio. GG's, mate. It's definitely something you don't see, but look at that boy. Yes, sir. The count has drawn blood and he has achieved victory. That animation that they have is actually from the Anderson Silva fight, actually. After he won, this dude was giddy up in Manchester. I think they were in the UK for that one, and he was lit, son. Freaking lit. Uh, a lot of controversy over that fight, because Michael Biskin was getting that first Israel Adesanya Alex Pajeda treatment, where he was getting cooked, mate. Freaking cooked. But anywho, uh, it's been your boy Tarichigo. And y'all have a good one, man. Make sure that if you like this video, make sure to like it and subscribe and leave a comment. Who's the greatest middleweight of all time? Let me know in the comments. Y'all have a good one.